morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, starting the morning off with a live look out of the Alamo City. 75 degrees to start your morning. A few sprinkles driving in this morning. We're going to check in not only what's happening here locally, but what is happening across the country. Good morning to 6 o'clock on Saturday, August 28th. So excited to start the morning. I can't even speak so far. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, yesterday was nice to have that kind of that rain come in in the mm -hmm. afternoon. And I was actually driving in from Dallas off into t on 10. I got some pretty severe showers coming in, Sarah. Well, there were no, yeah, there were no severe thunderstorms, so that's good. But you're right, it was heavy downpour. The blanket, yeah, <laughs> the water. The 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 rain could be blinding at times because it was coming down so hard. And you know, today we're going to have another day where in the afternoon we are going to have some of those heavier rain showers and thunderstorms at times in the afternoon. However, right now it is fairly quiet around San Antonio. Uh, there might be a couple of sprinkles out there, but I wouldn't count on any rain this morning. Meanwhile, though, down near Cuero, Victoria, Beeville, Goliad, we are seeing some heavier uh, showers this morning, uh, but the main activity for us in San Antonio today should hold off until the afternoon. Outside right now, it's 75 degrees, mostly cloudy, and we've actually got a wind from the northeast at five miles per hour. It does not feel all that bad outside right now. And this afternoon and tomorrow, our highs will be limited in the low 90s. The reason for that is today, there's a 40% chance for the afternoon, so those afternoon downpours that we were mentioning. And tomorrow, a 30% chance for isolated downpours in the afternoon. Afternoon. So it's not going to be a perfect weekend for outdoor activities, but really the eight times that you should be watching out for the showers and the thunderstorms are in the afternoon hours between about 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Meanwhile, coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about Hurricane Ida, currently a Category 1 hurricane, but expected to rapidly intensify before it makes landfall in Louisiana. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. I'll have those details coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a big update to tell you about. A man in custody after police say he shot at a father who was bringing his family home, including a one-year-old child. It's a story we first told you about yesterday on GMSA. Big update, police say Jose Rodriguez Moreno shot at a family who were driving on Monticello Court. And Moreno tells police he thought the people in the truck fired at him first, so he shot back. But investigators say there is no evidence to support that claim. Now, this is a look at the scene from yesterday morning shooting. Again, it happened on Monticello Court, but police actually found the victim and his family at an AGB parking lot not too far from where the shooting occurred. Now, he tells police he sped off to protect his family. The victim shot twice in the shoulder. The other two passengers luckily not injured. A Bear County deputy who happened to be in the area noticed the man running down the street, cornered him in a backyard. Turns out it was the suspect. He now faces three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And as you head out the door this morning, we have a traffic alert on the city's north side right now. All lanes of traffic are closed in both directions on Nacogdoches Road between Broadway and Nottingham Road. Crews are working to remove a large crane from a construction site in the area. That stretch of road set to reopen Monday morning around 5. Let's take a live look at Kabul, the skyline in Afghanistan. As we keep a close eye on this developing situation, the U.S. launched a drone strike in eastern Afghanistan that killed a member of ISIS-K. That's the group claiming responsibility for that horrific suicide bomber attack that killed 13 U.S. servicemen. Now, authorities say the militant was involved in the planning of future attacks against Americans over there in Kabul. ABC's Christine Sloan is tracking the latest this morning. After a deadly attack at Kabul airport that killed more than a dozen U.S. service members, U.S. Central Command is confirming it has carried out an unmanned airstrike against an ISIS-K planner in Afghanistan. Officials say the target who was killed was involved in possibly planning additional attacks. But there is no link between the person targeted and Thursday's suicide bomb attack at Kabul airport. That attack killed 13 American service members and 170 Afghans. The Pentagon revealing 11 Marines, one Navy medic and one Army soldier among the fallen, including Navy medic Max Soviak of Ohio and Marines Riley McCullum of Wyoming, Kareem Nikui and Hunter Lopez of California and David Lee Espinoza of Texas. But I am proud of him because he did, but as a mother, you know, 
It's hard, but he did serve. He did do what he wanted, but it's hard. Hours after that attack, the president vowed to punish ISIS-K in Afghanistan, the group behind the attack. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. President Biden warned by his national security team that another terror attack in Kabul is likely, calling the threat specific and active, and saying the next few days will be the most dangerous period to date. They are uh, taking maximum force protection measures at the Kabul airport and in the surrounding areas with our forces. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. We're going to take a live look at the Bonacary Spillway in South Louisiana this morning. Traffic expected to worsen as families evacuate ahead of Hurricane Ida. This is the interstate that connects New Orleans and Baton Rouge. The traffic coming towards the screen is leaving New Orleans. That's right. New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell says the city cannot issue a mandatory evacuation because simply they don't have enough time. The last thing officials want is a gridlock traffic situation on the roads before the storm hits. Now, forecasters say Hurricane Ida rapidly gaining strength, expecting to become a Category 4 storm at its peak, packing winds of over 140 miles per hour. Experts believe that the storm could hit land as a major hurricane, which would be devastating to anything and anyone in its path. Of course, our meteorologist Sarah Spivey will have more on this in, during her forecast, but the forecast maps show the center of the storm going right through the state's capital, Baton Rouge. Thousands are under hurricane warnings as they scramble to make last-minute preparations. This will be a life-altering storm for those who aren't prepared and ready to take uh, what Ida is going to throw at us. The storm is expected to bring winds of up to 140 miles per hour. And by the way, it's also expected to make landfall on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. In your morning headlines, Sirhan Sirhan, the man found guilty for shooting and killing Senator Robert F. Kennedy, has been granted parole after serving 53 years behind bars. But this parole does not assure Sirhan's release from prison. The governor will ultimately decide if Sirhan leaves jail. Now, important to mention, though, two of RFK's sons went against several of their siblings' wishes. They actually supported releasing Sirhan Sirhan. Prosecutors declined to argue why he should be kept behind bars, but six of Kennedy's nine surviving children decried the parole board's vote. Those six now urging Governor Gavin Newsom to reverse the decision and keep the murderer in prison. The new voting bill in Texas is moving forward in the state house. This comes after months of delays from quorum breaking Democrats who attempted to stop the restrictions in the measure. Republicans argued the bill ensures election integrity despite no proof of widespread voter fraud. Democrats say if passed into law, these voting changes would be overly restrictive. Next step is the Texas Senate and then the governor's desk. Time now is 6.08, 75 degrees out. Well, caught on camera, a tornado touchdown in China. Details after the break. And back here at home, 75 degrees to start your Saturday morning. Maybe some sprinkles out there if you are out and about. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for everything you need to know about the forecast in just a bit. Well, check this out, this video out of China. This wow. is amateur footage of a strong tornado oh, touching goodness. down, damaging dozens of buildings. As you can imagine, a big cleanup is now underway. No word on any injuries. All right, and there's a lot of weather in the newscast today. That's because there's a lot going on. We're going to check in with our Sarah Spivey. Sarah. You've been busy this morning. Well, yeah, not necessarily locally, but keeping up with Hurricane Ida, which is unfortunately going to be devastating for parts of Louisiana. Now, here in San Antonio, we do have another opportunity for rain this afternoon. Some areas got some good, healthy downpours. In fact, it rained for all of two minutes at my place, but there was already some major ponding on the streets. And today, we're expecting rain in a similar uh, matter this afternoon, where we'll have thunder showers and some of those will be healthy, uh, heavy rain producers with frequent lightning, but we are not anticipating severe weather today. All right, outside right now it's 76 degrees. We've got a relatively calm winds at the moment and locally it is fairly quiet. A few sprinkles out there are possible, but out toward our coastal communities of Quero, Goliad uh, and Victoria, we're seeing some thunder showers early this morning there. Now again, those will be moving up into the metro area 
area this afternoon. Meanwhile, temperatures are in the 70s, 75 in New Braunfels, 75 in Pleasanton. It's 80 degrees though out in Del Rio, 73 in Creases Springs, a nice comfortable 72 in Kerrville. Here's a look at the future cast and as you can see, it does show thunder showers in the area this afternoon between about 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. That's the best chance for rain. Again, not everybody is going to get rain today, but if you do again, heavy downpours are possible with frequent lightning as well as wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. That's entirely possible as well. Uh, and the chance for rain today is about 40%. Now, even if you do not get the rain, we will have the benefit of enjoying a, a relatively cooler day. Now it's still going to be warm and humid outside, but highs will be in the low 90s this afternoon. So here's what we've got in the forecast. Humid in 82 at 10 around noon. That's where we're going to start to introduce our chances for rain. 40% in the afternoon at 5 p.m. Low 90s for the high right around 93 degrees. Sun will set at 8 o'clock and we'll turn the tap off for the day. Uh, east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now on the radar and satellite, there is a area of low pressure, a trough of low pressure uh, in South Texas right now. This is what's going to keep that chance for rain in this afternoon locally and even tomorrow afternoon, a 30% chance for rain tomorrow, just not as, as uh, numerous as the showers and storms are going to be potentially today. Of course, all of the nation focused on Hurricane Ida, which is currently a category one hurricane with winds of 80 miles per hour, but it is expected to rapidly intensify today over these warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, by the afternoon, it'll be a category two hurricane uh, by tomorrow morning, a category three. And at the time of landfall, potentially a major category four hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour. And it is going to impact any uh, areas from New Iberia to New Orleans, including Baton Rouge. The forecast track moving through Baton Rouge uh, overnight. That's also not a great part about this storm is that most of the impacts are going to be happening in the dark at night. And so that's why you see these massive evacuations right now from uh, New Orleans. It will eventually dissipate over the Appalachian Mountains uh, by Tuesday and Wednesday. But still, this is going to be a devastating storm. Uh, peak storm surge, which of course is one of the most deadliest parts about hurricanes of 10 to 15 feet along parts of coastal uh, uh, coastal Louisiana with even Lake Pontchartrain potentially rising by four to seven feet. And not only is the surge going to be an issue, but look at this potential rainfall uh, from Hurricane Ida over the next few days. We could see anywhere you see these yellow colors, that is at least about 15 inches of rain, but there could be pockets of 20 inches of rain from Ida as well. And this is an area that is very close to sea level and that floods very easily. And unfortunately, Ida is going to bring some very damaging damaging conditions to Louisiana. Now, it, as was mentioned earlier, this is going to make landfall at the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. If you want to follow along, we'll of course keep you updated, but we have a free hurricane tracker app that you can download and you can zoom in and see the path yourself if you want to. Again, you can find that anywhere you get your apps. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we're not going to have any direct effects from Ida, but we are going to see those scattered showers and storms this afternoon. We'll keep you updated and some isolated storms possible tomorrow afternoon as well as on Monday. It's going to be a hot week with a high near 98 on Tuesday. A few isolated showers return into the forecast by the week's end. Max and Sarah coming up, I'll have a look at Ida's potential wind gusts as well. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. All right, 616 and 75 degrees. All right, Friday Night Lights are back, and they are bigger and brighter than ever after the break. We are talking high school football, Texas high school football. We're the best in the country. We have highlights, some of the biggest matches in and around town. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick 3, 2, 7, 8, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 4, 0, 5, 5, Fireball 8. All right, your cash 5, 2, 28, 32, 33, 35. Here we go. You don't have your numbers out. Because I know I didn't win. Okay, Miss Pessimism <laughs> over here. Mega Millions, 110, 44, 47, 56. Big number 23, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. We'll be right back.
new graphic for big game coverage. We got a new season of high school football. That's right. We're back and we're talking high school football. Sky 12 above Ferris Stadium. Big game in the big game coverage. First full Friday night of the 2021 football season. Number one Brennan against number two Reagan. 12's top 12. Tex Football Magazine's two of the top 20 teams in the state. That was third quarter. Brennan up 14. There's a Rattlers, though. Trayshawn Jones, we used to saw him go up the middle. And look at here, number eight, evading the defenders. That's a nine-yard scramble. Evading defenders again. Quick instep. And then here he is. Ooh, right up the middle. Rumble, big man, rumble. That is a big score. Brennan up 21-14. They extended their lead midway through the fourth. That was Tolfrey pushing his way up the middle. The Bears' lead grows to 14 on that two-yard run. They end up winning big 35-14. to 14. Coming into the game, you know, we, we knew they was going to come out and play as physical, so we had to come out and just dominate and just, just, just be us and just have that uh, mom mentality. We knew it was going to be a slugfest. It was a slugfest. We had breaks, they had breaks. I mean, this had everything that a football game can have. It looks worse on the scoreboard. This was a close, hard-fought game. Gotta love Slugfest. All right. Warren, greeting us that we arrived to Gustavin Stadium. First home game against Smithson Valley. Take a look. Warriors pinned down in their own territory, trying to create space, but the Rangers get the sack. That would lead to this. Derek Matta, play action. Cole Douglas up in there, number 40. Ooh! Make the man miss, get in the end zone. Smithson Valley taking the early 7-0 lead. Good for you, 40. Good work. All right, Smithson Valley, though, winning big 32. Warren, 13. All right, there we go. A lot of push-ups from the Rockets. Number four, Judson hosting DeSoto. Title of the top 25 teams at Rutland Stadium. Rockets up 28-14. Third quarter, Jonathan Bowens gets after the quarterback. Strip sack. Alex Garcia there for the fumble recovery. Three plays later, Judson, though. Wait for it. Oh. Almost making it look easy. You got to extend the arms across the plane. Quarterback Michael Burrows calling his own number three yard rush. And that is 35-14 lead. Final from Converse. Let's take a look. 35-28. All right, here we go. The Steel Knights got to hype it up a little bit. Ready for their first game of the 2021 season. Hosting Hendrickson from Pflugerville. The Hawks not wasting any time attacking the Knights. Joseph Rodriguez on the slant to DJ Pinkerton. Look at man fly 80 yards. They will not catch number nine. Speedster right out of the gate, putting the Hawks up 7-0. All right, let's take a look at our big game coverage scoreboard. All right, Pflugerville Hendrick, 14, Steele 35, Judson 35, DeSoto 28. Also out last night, fan cam. Our fans help us cover some of the biggest games. Here's Andrew Seeley. Lions, San Antonio Christian and their rabid fans hosting Cole in their season opener tonight. Pick it up in the second quarter, no score. Cougars on the prowl. Quarterback Walker Cunningham keeps it himself, finds a lane, and he takes off along the far sideline. Eventually, he's brought down six yards short of the end zone, and Cole gets in on the very next play. Jerron Stewart powers across the goal line for the touchdown. Extra point, no good, so it's 6-0 Cougars. After Cole forces a turnover, they strike again. This time, Cunningham finds Pierre Harris for a diving touchdown grab. They go for two and convert to make it 14-0. Cole did just score another touchdown as fan cam departs midway through the second quarter. Order. They missed the extra point, though, but they still lead San Antonio Christian 20 to nothing. From Lion Pride Stadium, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, big shout out to all of our photographers, all the reporters, all of the web team. There's so much to do. And a shout out to our Sarah Costa. You made it out to Friday Night Lights. No, I, I went out to Pleasanton to see what was going on there. They played Edison. Pleasanton won. Oh, there we go. The Are we uh, officially Pleasanton fans? Um, you know, I'm trying to be everything. Okay, yeah. I like that. <laughs> All right, time now, 625, 75 degrees out. Well, after the break, a look at what's Ooh. coming up on Texas East. Oh, looks good. Mm, Barbecue to start oh, the yeah. morning? Yep, that looks good. Oh, yeah. I'm hungry now. So we're going to start with a brisket quesadilla. Yes, mijo, a brisket quesadilla. And I'm not and I'm not cheap on my brisket either. You Ooh. get a good amount. Oh, it's not. You can smell. As soon as you lifted that lid off, you can smell the smoke. Yes, I smoke it with mesquite, mijo. So it looks like two different kinds, three different kinds of cheeses you got yes, going on. Yes, Kobe Jack. And then I use a little bit of the um, Monterrey, just yeah. Monterrey, because I like it creamy. Right. And you cannot have a quesadilla if it's not, if it's, um, not toasting. Yeah. So I do not rush my quesadillas. I like them 
very crispy and I flip it a lot so it doesn't burn too much on one side. Look at but you're going to see that it's going to start <laughs> melting right away. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It's almost perfect for you to try wow. it. Wow. Are you going to want to try it with some green salsa, mijo? Yes, please. Can you get the squeeze bottle? Pretend like you're at your home. Okay. And you're going to get the bottle in there, the top right hand, the other Oh, right there you there. go. It's like creamy. I love that advice. I don't rush my quesadillas. Mm. That's pretty solid life advice there. When you make them, bring them in. Okay. We got to test them. Okay. <laughs> it's 629, 75 degrees out. Well, ahead in our next half hour, the federal eviction moratorium is coming to an end, and there are several things you need to keep in mind. We'll break it all down. Good morning. Welcome back, and happy Saturday, 632 this Saturday morning, August 28th. We are running through August. Thank God. <laughs> Well, no, you know what I did yesterday mm. for the first time in a long time? I got a pumpkin spice latte or other known as a PSL. PSL, it's and, early. And I thought maybe if I got it, mm -hmm. like the weather would start. The acting. rain came though the when rain, you got it. The rain did come, Sarah. And you know what? The rain is really the only way that we'll be able to experience cool downs in the summer months. And today, this afternoon, we have another shot at some scattered rain. Again, it is not going to rain everybody everywhere, but where it does rain, we are going to see some rain cooled air at times. So that is nice. Outside right now, it, we have seen these familiar morning clouds work their way back in. It's 76 degrees with relatively calm wind conditions and definitely humid out there. Dew points are in the low 70s. While it's quiet around San Antonio right now, there are some showers out near Cuero and Goliad. Uh, these are going to be pushing toward that I-35 corridor, especially this afternoon with the daytime heating. And so that's why we have a 40% chance for scattered downpours today. And even tomorrow, we will have some isolated rain in the afternoon. But coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk in detail about Hurricane Ida, where it's headed, and potentially how strong that hurricane can be at the time of landfall. So a lot to chat about in the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an investigation is underway after a deadly overnight crash on the city's south side. It happened just after 1 a.m. Police say a driver crashed into another vehicle at the intersection of South Cross and Zarzamora. The driver that was hit died at the scene. The driver that caused the crash was detained. No word on charges. Also overnight, a man is recovering after he was hit by a car on the city's west side. It happened just after 1030 last night on Guadalupe Street and Southwest 18th Street. Police tell us he was crossing the street when he was hit. The driver that hit him took off but then came back. He is not facing any charges. With the end to the federal eviction moratorium, it's important to note city, state and federal programs are still available to help you pay back any rent that you still owe. Patty Santos reports the programs could also be saving your credit history. If a landlord gets a judgment in an eviction uh, against you, it can go on your credit and it can affect your credit and it can also go on your rental history. There are still a lot of renters who don't know money is available to those financially hurt by the pandemic. Right now, there are billions of dollars that the, the Congress has appropriated in rent relief and all tenants have to do is make application for rent relief. Come to court and tell me that they've made application and based on what the Texas Supreme Court has said, I automatically abate that case or put it on hold for two months. Bear County Precinct 3 Judge Jeff Wentworth says about half of those called to an eviction hearing don't show up. When tenants don't show up in court, I have no choice but to give a default judgment to the landlord. If you haven't been paying, that money is still owed. Even if you are evicted, you will owe back rent and it will show up in a rental history check. With an eviction on one's record, it makes it nearly impossible to find safe and affordable housing. If you're having problems paying your rent or other bills, there's a housing, legal and utility assistance clinic happening this Saturday at St. Mary's University from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Now taking a live look at Kabul this morning as the evacuations continue, continue. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., the offices of the members of Congress have become makeshift crisis centers. The lawmakers are being flooded with requests for help getting people out of Kabul. Look for the latest on this story on Good Morning America. And back here at home, one commander at Brook Army Medical Center saying the facility is capable of caring for combat injuries from Kabul, but not clear if any of the injured will be brought here to San Antonio. Still, the attack having a deep emotional impact. And we're ready 
Sorry. Ready to answer that challenge. And that's why that's that is why San Antonio is so important to the DOD. This is where readiness lives. Such an emotional situation. BAMC is the Department of Defense's only level one trauma center, and it is home to the Institute of Surgical Research Burn Center. In the meantime, they will continue caring for veterans, their family members, and help hospitals by taking in trauma patients. Now the pandemic here at home, a dozen more COVID-related deaths confirmed in Bear County. Hospitalizations seeing a small decrease. 1,319 COVID-19 patients are still in the hospital. Only 8% of staff hospital beds are available. And speaking of COVID, health officials reminding everyone not to take horse and cow dewormer as a way to prevent and treat COVID-19. Because of all the disinformation and misinformation on the internet, a lot of people have been taking veterinary grade Iver ivermectin, and it's specifically labeled as not being for human consumption. That's according to the FDA. Ivermectin is a drug that doctors prescribe to kill worms or treat external parasites in humans, but it's also used for veterinary purposes. Remember, the Texas Poison Center network available 24-7, 1-800-222-1222. All right, right now we are keeping a close eye on Hurricane Ida. Here's a live look at Key West, Florida. We know we expect a lot to be happening in Louisiana and in that area throughout the next 48 hours. Speaking of Louisiana, here's a live look at the Bonacary Spillway in South Louisiana. A lot of traffic, a lot of people are going through those evacuations. All right, time now is 638, 75 degrees out. Well, after the break, new details about the bus shortage here in San Antonio, plus the concerns from local parents. All right, now let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 75 degrees there now. Did you get any sprinkles on the way in? I did. Some yeah. light ones. Just light ones. It was good for the uh, windshield wipers. Yeah. Keep them wet. All right, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. The problem of a bus driver shortage is snowballing into more issues for Northside ISD. The district is trying to manage the situation. That's right. John Paul Brahas explains why parents are now really concerned. Northside ISD bus drivers are having to make more trips than usual because there just isn't enough of them to handle all the students riding buses to and from school. This is what one drop off spot looked like. A herd of students pouring out with even more on board. I guess somebody's not monitoring the level of growth right on these schools. Uh, every one of these neighborhoods comes with a new elementary school and a new middle school. So they haven't been, uh, you know, staffing accordingly. Joel Ziegler says he'd heard about the issues of overcrowding on buses, but had no idea how bad things had gotten. We showed him a picture of inside one Harlan High School bus. Wow, I had heard that they were sitting on the floor, uh, but that's, that's, I would not have imagined that to be the case here in San Antonio. We aren't airing that picture because minors are shown. The district sent us this statement that reads in part, a second bus was sent to split the run and adjustments have been made to prevent further overcrowding. It went on to say, currently the district is down approximately 20 routes. Ideally, we would like to hire 60 additional drivers so that we are able to handle all necessary routes. Getting around is, is, is an inconvenience, but like a day like today where it's inclement weather, we're coming up to winter. So if it's your kid that's left out on the, on the curb, that always is going to present a challenge. And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. The district also saying they will continue to split bus routes for as long as necessary to make sure buses are not crowded. And the Harlan principal said he is working with the transportation department. He believes that this issue will be solved soon. The Northside Independent School District has several positions open for bus drivers and bus assistants. You can apply on their website, nisd.net. All right, 75 degrees out there right now. Sarah Spivey, tracking a lot this morning. Yeah, we are talking about the chance for rain locally here in San Antonio this afternoon. And we're going to, of course, detail Hurricane Ida, which is going to rapidly intensify over the Gulf of Mexico today. 76 degrees outside, and we are seeing some clouds out there, but we're getting the first light of the day. It is quiet around San Antonio. No rain yet, but look out toward Cuero. You can see some uh, heavier showers out there right now moving through Cuero proper and moving through Goliad as well. You really have to go further east to see any lightning, but as we get the daytime heating today, we are going to be seeing thunder showers uh, move toward that I-35 corridor this afternoon. Best time for rain about uh, 
Well, let's say 2 to 7 p.m. this afternoon. That's the peak heating hours of the day. 80 degrees right now in Del Rio, 76 in Hondo, 76 in Pleasanton, at 75 in New Braunfels, and 72 in Kerrville. And I'll show you here the future cast, and you'll see what I mean. Again, between about 2 p.m., we'll start to see some isolated to scattered showers. And then during the peak heating hours of the day uh, through about 7 p.m., that's when we'll see scattered rain, a lot like yesterday here in San Antonio. I got rain yesterday for all of two minutes, but it created ponding on the road. It was very heavy rainfall. Whatever rain falls today will be heavy uh, and it will contain quite a bit of lightning as well. So keep that in mind. We're not anticipating severe weather today, but a few heavier thunder showers are entirely possible until we see the sunset at 8 p.m. and then we'll lose that daytime heating and the chance for rain as well. So for today's forecast, 82 at 10, 87 at noon, and then in the afternoon a 40% chance for scattered showers and thunder showers east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, we've got the rain chance today and a chance for isolated rain tomorrow because of a trough of low pressure in South Texas. It's going to be moving west and keeping our chance for rain in the forecast through tomorrow. Again, it'll only be isolated tomorrow, but of course everyone talking about Hurricane Ida right now, which is just north of Cuba. It is currently a category one hurricane but it is going to rapidly intensify over these very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Those act like fuel and really start to fire up these uh, storms. This hurricane, which has current wind gusts of 100 miles per hour, is expected to strengthen to a Category 2 hurricane today in the Gulf of Mexico. Then by the overnight hours, a Category 3 hurricane is shortly before landfall. It is expected to be a major Category 4 hurricane making landfall tomorrow in the evening hours, likely af late afternoon and evening hours, 16 years to the date of Hurricane Katrina. Now it does look like it's going to be just a little bit west of New Orleans, but New Orleans is still expected to get major impacts from Hurricane Ida, including storm surge and lots of flooding rains. Now it'll be making landfall again tomorrow in the afternoon hours with the biggest impacts being in the evening and overnight across Louisiana. And so that's not a good thing if you have the huge impacts of the wind gusts and the heavy rains as well as storm surge when it's dark outside, but that looks to be the case. And then it'll be moving across uh, the Mississippi River uh, area, likely by Monday afternoon as a tropical storm. Now again, much of Louisiana, Mississippi is under hurricane warnings or tropical storm warnings. And of course, there have been some mandatory evacuations for some areas around New Orleans. Look at this wind gust potential at Homa right at about uh, tomorrow afternoon. There could be wind gusts of up to 100 plus miles per hour. There could be wind gusts near New Orleans, 60 to 80 miles per hour, which is again like a severe thunderstorm. And then near Baton Rouge at about 90 miles per hour by the late evening hours on Sunday, even bringing tropical storm winds all the way up to Jackson, Mississippi, and the flooding rains are going to be a big, big deal for a good part of Louisiana from New Orleans to Lafayette to Baton Rouge, where there could be 15 plus inches of rainfall in the next about uh, 48 hours or so. Now here in San Antonio, as I mentioned, scattered rain today and we'll be looking at isolated rain tomorrow. We're not going to have any direct effects from Ida, but of course we have a lot of people evacuating Louisiana uh, for areas in Houston, San Antonio College Station, all of those areas. So we'll be watching Ida very carefully, keeping you updated. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, keeping you updated on the scattered thunder showers this afternoon. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 649, 75 degrees now. Well, could your heart health be at risk? After the break, how you can beat the statistic. Is your heart's health at risk? A lot of people suffer from heart failure. Over 5 million Americans in any given year will be diagnosed with heart failure. And that number is expected to rise for a variety of different reasons. One person dies every 36 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease. But how can you make sure your heart health is doing okay? First, lose the booze. It can raise your blood pressure and increase triglycerides, the level of fats in the blood. Also, ditch the sugars. Added sugar intake can lead to blood pressure, bodily inflammation, weight gain, diabetes, and fatty liver disease. 
all conditions that can skyrocket your chances of having a heart attack. Also, the American Heart Association advises that adults consume no more than 150 calories of sugar a day. That's equal to just one can of Coke. And have your blood pressure checked and know your cholesterol levels. Having this information can be key for monitoring your heart's health. The analogy is when the car can't drive up the hill um, as the engine has some damage, uh, it's, it's the same thing with the heart. And for your heart's sake, get up and get moving, even if it's just a walk around the block. With every step, walking can improve your cholesterol levels, blood pressure, and energy levels, plus it can fight weight gain. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Now to some more high school football. Off we go to Bernie, where Bernie Champion welcoming the Stevens Falcons to their home turf. Let's take a look. First drive of the season for the Chargers. Fourth and six on the Falcons' 41-yard line. Going for it. Carson Kaiser going deep for Davis Pike. Getting behind the defender. Incredible touchdown. Extra point was missed, so six-nothing champion. Let's see. Long game. We got the final. Stevens 31. Bernie Champion 32. What a barn burner. All right, next up, saying hello to fans at brand new Orem Stadium. Number 10, Alamo Heights hosting Bernie. Third quarter, Greyhounds up 23-20. Adding to the lead, quarterback Rashawn Galloway lofted at the corner of the end zone. Cam Johnson, beautiful 15-yard strike, 30-20 Bernie. And we got the final from that one. Bernie 30, Alamo Heights 34. Another great game to start off Friday Night Lights. And next up, Hero Stadium, number 6, Johnson taking on Wagner. Let's see, ooh, everyone's psyched. You got a rundown. Here we go, fourth quarter, Jaguars clinging to a 1.14-13 lead, and boom, second and goal, five-yard handoff, Ben cutting up the middle, game-clinching touchdown, Johnson going on to win it big, 21-13. All right, the Roosevelt Rough Riders coming out for their first game of the season at Commander Stadium, hosting the Alexander Bulldogs from Laredo. Let's take a look, Bulldogs biting first. He menaced to Sebastian because of the receiver screen, and that is good enough for a gain of 11. Bulldogs are barking two plays later. Pass to Jimenez. Ooh, this time a 12-yard score. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard. Here we go. Final, Roosevelt 14, Laredo Alexander 10, Johnson 13, Johnson 21, Wagner 13. If you guys have any questions about any of the scores, any of the highlights, we have so much and so much more. Just head to KSAT.com. Exciting. Very exciting. 655, 75 degrees out. We have a lot more heading your way later this morning on GMSA, including what doctors say to avoid at all costs, what they say you need to always remember, and here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Well, today's forecast calls for afternoon downpours. A lot like yesterday, we are not going to be having a ton of uh, rain widespread in the area, but just a few scattered showers and storms in the area. It'll be 87 at noon and then in the afternoon 93 for the high temperature. So a little bit cooler because of surrounding rain cooled air. Again, a 40% chance for scattered downpours. No severe weather anticipated, but where it does rain, there will be some heavy downpours and some lightning. Sun will set at eight and we'll uh, call it a day on the rain. But even tomorrow, isolated showers and storms in the afternoon. Afternoon. Similar story on Monday, and then it'll be very hot on Tuesday. A high temperature of 98 before isolated retur rain returns by the end of the week. Now, uh, guys, coming up, we'll have plenty of updates for you on Hurricane Ida at 8. We anticipate rapid intensification of Ida today, so uh, the information will be different at 8. All right. Well, here at home, how much do we need this rain? Oh, you know, we can use any little bit of rain in August. We're still doing okay from the summer's rainfall, but still, we'll take any bit of rain we can get. Thank you, Sarah. There's okay. five of See you guys coming up at 8. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A scary crash on the city's south side ends with one person dead and another in police custody. We have the latest details. We examine how the state's foster care system works and the ways in which it has failed. And some late breaking news into the newsroom. Uh, we have a crew right now, our multimedia journalist, Stephen Chavez on the scene of a fire. This is the 2700 block of Southwest Military Drive. Now uh, the fire call came out just after 7 a.m. Currently working to get more information, but right now we do know that there was no one inside at the time of the fire. No injuries have been reported. Now, this is the Tri-Color Auto, and we're told it was a used car uh, industry. 
and it is no longer up and running. Now, arson investigators are on their way working to figure out what exactly caused it. Right now, though, we are told there's about $100,000, $120,000 in damage. And like we said, arson investigators on the way. So once we get more information, we're going to update you. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday, August 28th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Driving in, saw some showers. Yeah, I had some showers on the, on the windshield this Haven't morning. Haven't seen much lately, though. Well, I haven't been outside. That's fair. That's <laughs> definitely a good point. Sarah Spy, but you said we can expect some, you know, showers, scattered showers throughout the, the, the day. Yeah, especially in the afternoon. Some scattered thunder showers, a lot like yesterday where some folks got some rain and it was heavy rain at times. So I want to show you the radar right now. You can see that there are some showers moving into Lavaca County, south of Hallettsville and also south of Gonzalez. Around San Antonio, though, we do have a couple of areas of sprinkles, but that's about it. Again, the main show, if you do get some good rain will be this afternoon between about 2 to 7 p.m. Outside right now we're seeing these morning clouds. It's mostly cloudy, 76 degrees, relatively calm conditions this morning as far as wind, winds are concerned. And it is humid outside, of course. It's summertime, so we can expect that humidity. It's 72 in Rock Springs, not so bad in Kerrville, where it's 72, 79 in Del Rio, 73 in Carrizo Springs, 77 in Pleasanton, and 74 in Kennedy. We'll carry a 20% chance for isolated rain through noon, but again, it's the afternoon 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. that will have scattered showers and thunder showers in the area. We are not anticipating severe weather, but if you do get a thunder shower, heavy rain like yesterday is possible in spots as well as lightning. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set at 8 o'clock. And of course, the nation is focused on Hurricane Ida today. Hurricane Ida is a category one hurricane in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico right now, but these waters are so warm Warm, it will rapidly intensify to a major hurricane before making landfall along Louisiana's coast. I'll have an update on the track of Ida, and of course, we'll talk about impacts to the Louisiana coast as well. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police say a driver is dead after an overnight crash on the city's south side. All of this happening just after 1 a.m. Police telling us a driver was crossing the intersection of South Cross and Zarzamora. That's when they were hit by a driver and a Dodge Challenger. That driver that was hit killed on impact. Officers on the scene telling us the driver of the Dodge not injured. They were given a sobriety test. Police taking the suspect into custody, not yet charged. We are still waiting to learn what charges, if any, they will face. Well, here's what you need to know about the latest surge of COVID-19 cases here at home. City health officials say our seven day average is at 1,176 new cases. 12 more people have died from the virus. There is a slight decrease on hospitalizations. 1,319 people are in our local hospitals with 374 in the ICU and 252 on ventilators. 65.9% of people are fully vaccinated. If you're having trouble paying your rent and your bills because of hardships via this pandemic, there is a place that you can find help today. There is a housing, legal and utility assistance clinic happening later this morning. The U.S. Supreme Court ending the federal eviction moratorium. That means anyone who has not paid rent can now be evicted. But there are a lot of programs, especially locally, available for rental assistance. Now, one thing local judges say that if you do get an order to appear in court for eviction, you cannot ignore it because it could hurt you in the long run and it can also negatively impact your credit history. With an eviction on one's record, it makes it nearly impossible to find safe and affordable housing. My understanding is that a landlord would rather not have to evict someone, go several months uh, without rent, finding a new person. Um, if we can just give them the money that is owed already but, and make the landlord um, whole to, to some extent. City of San Antonio leaders say they are also looking for ways to extend the renters' help to mortgages and those affected by the U.S. Supreme Court's decision. The first place to start in order to avoid an eviction is by showing up to today's event. That event at St. Mary's University starts at 9 a.m., goes to 1 p.m. If you have any questions about the event, how to get involved, where to go, we have all that info right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, the new voting bill in Texas is one step closer to getting passed. This comes after months of delays from quorum breaking Democrats who attempted to stop the restrictions in the measure. Republicans argued the bill ensures election integrity despite no proof of widespread voter fraud. Democrats say if passed into law, these voting changes would be overly restrictive. Next step is the Texas Senate and then the governor's desk. 
And there are a lot of new laws in Texas that are set to go into effect next week, and there's a good chance at least one of them will impact you. In our website, they, we have an article explaining some of those laws. That is constitutional carry, body-worn cameras, and medical marijuana, just amongst the many that go into effect later this week. For all this information, any questions you have, just head to KSAT.com. All right, well, this week we released a brand new episode of KSAT Explains and it examines how the state's foster care system works and the ways in which it has failed. For this episode, we talked to several people who have firsthand knowledge of the problems with the system. RJ Marquez introduces us to two women who share their experiences going through foster care and explains how a local university helped provide them support. Michelle Calleros and Ashley Garcia, two women with two different stories, but they share a connection growing up in the foster care system. It's all about survival, making sure you don't end up homeless, making sure that you make something out of yourself because even though they don't say it, a lot of people are against you. At different group homes, lockdown facilities, shelters. I went to one foster home, but it was so bad that like, I never did a foster home after that again. It's so overcrowded, like sometimes you have to sleep in the CPS office. Both describe a system full of challenges, a system that 15,000 children are currently in. Michelle was just 14 years old when she went into foster care. She bounced from placement to placement. Just gone, people kind of just forget about you, like, like really, and then on top of that, like, you don't know where you're going next because they just place you randomly, like wherever there's a bed open. Ashley says it was hard to build trust with the people who were supposed to help. I went through a few case managers and case workers that didn't do what they were supposed to do at the very minimum. And that becomes another hurdle for you. And despite the challenges, both women found the strength to change their lives. Ashley became a mom while in foster care and used that as motivation. Before I aged out, they wanted to take my child, <laughs> so I had to do everything for that. And I enrolled into college um, before I even, what, before my daughter was born, so that way I wouldn't become another statistic. Both women found help at the Fate Center at Texas A&M San Antonio. The center helps adopted and fostered youths earn a college degree. Today, Michelle is still in extended foster care, a program that allows some turning 18 in foster care to stay in care until they turn 21. They have to be in high school, in college, or working at least 80 hours a month. Michelle is a student success mentor at A&M San Antonio and set to graduate soon. I used to be that kid on unit with these girls, locked up, no family, no outside world, couldn't go to public schools, couldn't even like get shampoo and conditioner without asking permission. And now like I'm helping them. Ashley is a recruiter and outreach coordinator. She's working on her master's degree. I'm proud to say that my daughter will be graduating a year early and she has her sights set on Harvard, so I must be doing something right. Both say while the foster care system is flawed, they're thankful for their opportunities. We've made it like this far, so I know I can make it further. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And KSAT explains the broken foster care system available to stream right now on demand. You can watch it also KSAT.com slash explains. Time now is 8.09, 75 degrees out. Well, Tesla has already made a big investment in Texas. Now wants to sell electricity as well. We explain still ahead. And really interesting story we've been talking about throughout the morning. Archaeologists discover human bones never seen before. We're going to explain and why it's so interesting. Taking a look outside with live cam 76 degrees at 809 this morning. Sarah Spivey says we can expect some scattered rain throughout the day. She'll explain when we come back. Welcome back. Archaeologists might have just discovered the first ancient human DNA on an Indonesian island. All right, so a new research study published this week says the distinct human lineage has never been found anywhere else in the world. Take a look. So here they are. These are the bones of a teenage hunter-gatherer who died more than 7,000 years ago. An archaeologist says the findings suggest, quote, that there might be a distinct group of modern humans in this region that we had no idea about. This is amazing. Researchers say the latest findings are one piece of the puzzle as they work to understand the ancient genetic history of humans in Southeast Asia. Can you imagine, like, 7,000 years ago? I'm just, yeah, I got nothing. Very cool stuff. You know what else is really cool? What? The weather. 
the weather. <laughs> it, well, locally it'll be warm, <laughs> Max, actually. Uh, but we are going to see some scattered showers and storms this afternoon. That will help us keep away from that 100 degree mark, which we still have technically not hit around San Antonio. But a lot like yesterday, we'll have scattered showers and storms in the area. This is a look outside right now. Oh, wow. A nice start to the day. A good mixture of uh, mid and low level clouds here this morning. 76 degrees with generally calm wind conditions. Today the wind will be from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And a look outside right now with the radar. There are some showers pushing into Gonzales County right now. Just some light to moderate rain. Uh, some light to moderate rain moving into Lavaca County as well. So Gonzales and Hallettsville within the next hour here you will see some showers around your towns. And meanwhile around San Antonio it's fairly quiet but up in Kendall County there are a couple of quick very uh, isolated showers moving through. The better chance for rain around San Antonio will be this afternoon between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, during that time frame, we'll see scattered showers and storms a lot like yesterday, a lot like yesterday, especially even in, in the strength of those storms. So we'll talk about that in a bit. But outside right now, it is mild. It's 76, as I just mentioned at the airport, a little cooler up in the hill country where it's 72 in Kerrville and in Rock Springs, 77 could Tula and Pleasanton 79 in Del Rio. All right, let's take you through that future cast for the day today. And again, you'll remember yesterday there were scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. It rained for two minutes at my place, but it was very, it came down very hard. And in fact, we saw a little bit of ponding on the roads. So today's rain, wherever it sets up, they're going to be very efficient rain producers. So heavy showers uh, at times, and then also flashes of lightning are going to be possible. We're not anticipating severe weather, but it could get noisy uh, if you do get a shower. Uh, and because there will be rain in the area, our highs will be limited into the low 90s today. We'll be at 91 in New Braunfels, 91 in Hondo, 93 in San Antonio, even out toward Del Rio, where it's usually in the triple digits, 96 for the high, and we'll have the upper 80s for the hill country. So not all that bad today. Uh, humid at 10, 82, 20% isolated at noon in 87. And then afternoon, that's when we're going to have the scattered showers and storms. Sun sets at 8 tonight and we'll see a rain chance temporarily turn off because there is a trough of low pressure to our south. This is going to keep isolated rain in the forecast tomorrow afternoon as well. Meanwhile, everyone paying attention to Hurricane Ida, which is rapidly intensifying across the Gulf of Mexico. The warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico currently with winds of 85, but just today it's going to strengthen into a category 2 hurricane overnight into a category three, a major category three hurricane making landfall somewhere between New Iberia and just to the south of New Orleans, where it will potentially be a category four hurricane with sustained winds of 140 miles per hour could be even stronger than that at the time of landfall as well. It'll be moving through Baton Rouge area through Sunday, the and pardon me, Sunday night into Monday morning. The part that's really dangerous about this storm is that it's going to be happening at night as well. So all of the major effects are going to be happening in the dark storm surge, gusty winds, uh, and also a lot of uh, rainfall as well. This will be moving across the Mississippi and falling apart by Tuesday. As for the effects, again, the storm surge is going to be pretty intense. Storm surge of up to 10 to 15 feet in spots. Lake Pontchartrain, 4 to 7 feet. Uh, and, of course, the rain in spots, we could see 15 to 20 inches of rain from Homa, Lafayette, New Orleans, and Baton Rouge area. This is why many people are evacuating Florida. Uh, pardon me, evacuating Louisiana. It is going to be a really dangerous hurricane, a major hurricane. If you'd like to track it yourself, you can get our hurricane. Hurricane Tracker app. Uh, you can zoom in on the cone and see the exact uh, impacts. Just make sure to allow those notifications. It's a free app that we have available on the Apple and Google Play Store. As for our weather in San Antonio, as I mentioned, scattered showers and storms this afternoon. Isolated tomorrow will be heating up Tuesday. 98 degrees for the high temperature on Tuesday with isolated rain by Thursday and Friday. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, 817, 76 degrees now. Well, today is Saturday, and that means Ooh. there's an episode of Texas Eats. We have a preview of what you can expect. Oh, my God, my stomach's growling on cue. What's ahead? <laughs> uh, plus, yogurt brand Shabani getting ready to sell yogurt in paper cups. Why? We're going to explain. 
Welcome back. In your morning consumer news, the largest electric vehicle company in the world has filed with the Texas Public Utility Commission to generate and sell electricity. That's right. Big news for Texas. Tesla how are you making a big investment in the Lone Star State with SpaceX and, of course, the new big car factory in Austin. But now Tesla wants to sell electricity here as well. So take a look. This is the first time the company has made plans to sell electricity directly to the public. And this comes after a notable failure in the Texas public or power grid. Remember that winter storm back in February. Texas, fun fact, has the third most electric vehicles across the country. The only two states ahead of us in electric vehicles, Florida and California. All right, Chobani says it will start selling its yogurt and paper cups this year. The design reduces the use of plastic, but it doesn't eliminate it. That's right, the cups will have plastic lining to protect the food. Chobani says it's responsibly sourcing material for the containers. People will be able to recycle them, but Chobani acknowledges that might be tricky with U.S. recycling limitations. All right, now to a story we've been talking about through the morning. Look at this puffy jacket. Rapper Kanye West getting some credit with helping The Gap make a remarkable turnaround this year. This puffy jacket, yes, $200, is the Ooh. first piece from Kanye's Yeezy branded clothes. I don't know. Well, let's see. Pre-orders have started in North America, Tokyo, and Europe. The company CEO says 75% of those customers are new to the Gap brand. That is awesome. Good for Gap. The sales helped the retail chain top expectations with Friday's earnings and sales reports. The jacket will begin shipping to customers this fall. Have you gotten yours yet? No, but I do keep up with the Kanye news. Yeah. Did you see that he's changing his name? I hadn't seen that yet. He's changed. He's filed paperwork mm. to change his name from Kanye West just to Ye. Y E. One word. Yay. I love it. Yay. Yay. Have you seen his, like, <laughs> I'm done. 823, 76 degrees out. All right. Today on Texas Eats, David Elder takes us inside a burger joint, New Braunfels, serving Ooh. up a spicy burger known as the Diablo. That's El, next. El Diablo. El Diablo. All right, so this is the Diablo burger. What's going on in this one? The main feature in this burger is the homemade jalapeno cheese fritter. There's two of those on the burger. Southwest Ranch, fresh jalapenos. We have a pickled red onion, jalapeno bacon, and it's a blackened patty. Delicious, it's uh, definitely our best seller. Y'all don't play around on the sizes on there. All that loaded goodness, come on. Here we go, take the bite. Oh, wow. Spicy, cheesy, meaty goodness. This is like everything you want when you think of a spicy cheeseburger. Give me some love. Right. If it's not messy, you're doing something wrong. Slightly spicy. That crispy bacon that's on there as well. It's seasoned really well. Got a little bit of that cheese, that cream on there. Yeah. So it blends it all out. It's a nice, well-rounded bite. But the bread, I love the roll that's on there because it's gonna give you that vehicle that you want to hold all that in. I gotta say the winner though, of this whole bite is those pickled red onions. It adds the sweetness and the acidity that cuts through that creaminess, that kind of balances out that heat. Wow. It's really not fair that we have to watch these all morning. I just, I wish she <laughs> just would like deliver El Diablos to us. Yeah. I'm not hungry. All right, 827, <laughs> 76 degrees out. Well, adopting a healthy lifestyle isn't always easy, but after years of seeing what they see, there are some habits that the experts consider off limits. We'll explain in our next half hour. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is August 28th. It is 8.31 this morning. We have so much to talk about, but first we're going to start with the weather. You see some uh, rain yesterday? Yeah, my, my yard saw some nice down down. Pours. Down pours. Yeah, yeah so, did, so did I as well. Uh, you know, it only rained technically at my place for like two minutes, but in those two minutes, we got a lot of rain. It created ponding on the roads. And today, this afternoon, we're going to see similar thunder showers in the area, scattered in nature, so about 40%, but still very um, decent chance for some at least some good soaking rains in spots. Now today at 10, it's just going to be humid here in the next hour and a half or so. 82 at 10 at noon, 87 and again between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. That's when we'll have scattered showers and storms in the area. The high today should only be in the low 90s because of uh, the rain cooled air, the surrounding rain cooled air. So at least we've got that working for us as well today. Now a look out at the radar. There are some showers out near Hallettsville and Gonzalez this morning. 
and some very light rain in, on the Kendall and Kerr County line. But other than that, we are looking at a mostly cloudy start to the day. You can see a good layering of low level clouds and mid level clouds as well. 76 outside uh, with a very high humidity and although winds are generally calm right now, we will have a breeze from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now as the sun is rising, we can actually see Hurricane Ida on the visible satellite imagery. This is a look at Hurricane Ida right now. You can see very clearly where the center of this hurricane is. Very soon here, we're going to have an eye develop on Hurricane Ida, which is a sign of strengthening and intensification. And in fact, if you look closely here, you can see what looks like a, a bubbling. Uh, those are the updrafts really close to the center of the storm there. And so this is why uh, most of Louisiana is under a hurricane warning right now because Ida has its sights set on Louisiana and this is going to be a major hurricane by the time it makes landfall sometime tomorrow. So coming up, we'll have more details about Ida. We'll have more details about our chance for rain in San Antonio as well in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, a man is in the hospital after he was hit by a car on the city's west side. It happened just after 1030 last night on Guadalupe Street and Southwest 18th Street. Officers tell us a 57 year old man was crossing Guadalupe Street when he was hit by a vehicle. The driver of that vehicle took off but then came back. The man was taken to the hospital but is expected to be OK. Police say the driver left the scene because he was being threatened by a man's friend and police have ruled this as an accident and the driver will not be charged. Also new this morning, a man has been arrested after police say he was he shot at a father who was bringing his family home and one of the people in that car, a one year old child. This is the story we first told you about yesterday on GMSA. We now know police telling us Jose Rodriguez Moreno shot at the family while they were in a truck on Monticello Court. Now the victim tells police he sped off to protect his family. He was shot twice in the shoulder. This is video from yesterday morning. The other two passengers luckily not injured. A Bear County deputy who happened to be in the area noticed Moreno, the suspect, running down the street, cornering him in a backyard. Moreno now facing three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Well, the problem of a bus driver shortage is snowballing into more issues for Northside ISD. The district is trying to manage the situation. Meanwhile, parents aren't happy with how things are going. This is what one drop off spot looked like. A herd of students pouring out with even more on board. An NISD parent says he had heard about the issues of overcrowding on buses, but had no idea how bad things had gotten. Wow, I had heard that they were sitting on the floor. Uh, but that's that's I would not have imagined that to be the case here in San Antonio. So the district sent us this statement that reads in part, quote, a second bus was sent to split the run and adjustments have been made to prevent further overcrowding, end quote. Then it went on to say currently the district is down approximately 20 routes. Ideally, we would like to hire 60 additional drivers so that we are able to handle all necessary routes, end quote. All right, if you're going to be out and about this weekend, big traffic warning that we want to let you know about. It is on the north side, not too far from the quarry, and it will likely result in slowdowns if you plan to head to that area. So take a look. A complete closure on Nacogdoches Road between Broadway and Nottingham. City of San Antonio Public Works Department says all lanes of traffic are closed in both directions, while crews remove a large crane from a construction site in the area. The road will reopen by 5 a.m. on Monday. If you have any questions about this or all of your traffic needs, we have all that info. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, in your morning headlines, American service members wounded in that bombing attack outside the Kabul airport. They've been flown to an airbase in Germany. ABC's Will Reeve is there with the latest on the injured. ABC News has learned that within minutes of Thursday's attack at the airport in Kabul, U.S. C-17s were on their way from here with medical supplies, other life-saving equipment. At a briefing at the Pentagon on Friday, General Hank Taylor said that two flights landed here Friday carrying our wounded personnel and they had been transferred to Launchstool Regional Medical Center to receive care. Now, an Air Force spokesman tells me here at the base there is a strategic pause in terms of flights coming in, but they have processed many, many people. More than 26,700 evacuees have come through here 
to Ramstein Air Base, and more than 5,000 evacuees have departed on 22 flights. Asylum seekers here, such as former U.S. local staff in Afghanistan and their families, they're leaving their homeland for fear of the Taliban. They're initially accommodated in tents and aircraft hangars here at the base. They will be registered, medically treated if necessary. So again, those U.S. personnel who have been wounded, we can't learn much more about them, but we know that those who did come here on those two flights landed and were taken to receive care right next to the base. The base is on a strategic pause as they try to process the sheer number of evacuees coming in from Afghanistan as the Taliban has taken Kabul and in the aftermath of that deadly attack at the airport on Thursday. That was Will Reeve reporting. Speaking of that deadly attack, the United States responding. U.S. Central Command saying that the military has conducted a successful airstrike on an ISIS-K planner of the bombing attack. The military says the unmanned strike appears to have killed the planner in a province of Afghanistan. Now, they didn't say the, if the attack hurt any civilians. President Joe Biden has vowed to retaliate against ISIS-K, which is the terrorist organization who claimed responsibility for that deadly explosion at the Kabul airport that killed 13 U.S. service member. Now, the U.S. Embassy in Kabul says that the airport is still in danger and Americans should avoid the area. President Joe Biden announcing a plan to raise wages for federal employees in a message to Congress. He says civilian federal employees will see an overall average increase of nearly 3% next year. The president recommended how to pay increase would be divided. He says the equation would be made up of an across the board base pay raise of 2.2% with local locality pay increases averaging half a percent. All right, now to the latest in the fight against COVID, an antibody treatment that was shelved because it was found ineffective against COVID. It is now being brought back to market. The U.S. paused distribution of this antibody treatment in June because it was ineffective against the beta and gamma variants of COVID. But studies are now showing that the drug combination is surprisingly effective against the Delta variant. Doctors now have three different antibody treatments to use in this fight against the coronavirus. And if you still need to get your COVID-19 vaccine, there are several vaccine pop-up clinics available today. There is one at MLK Plaza. That's on the intersection of New North New Braunfels Avenue and East Houston Street. It's happening from 9 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. Another one is happening at the Asbury United Methodist Church in San Pedro. That's from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. And then another one at the Center for Refugee Services at St. Francis Episcopal Church from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. This, these these are only, they are only this is only just some of the ones happening today. For a full list, visit ksat.com. Time now is 840, 77 degrees out. Well, what do doctors avoid doing at all costs? We'll tell you still ahead on GMSA. Plus, a heartwarming moment for U.S. veteran and three Italian siblings. We have this story still ahead. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 77 degrees at 840 this morning. Looks Aww. like a beautiful morning right now. Will that sun stay out or not? Sarah Spivey will explain when we come back. Well, if you are wanting to do something fun with the family this weekend, the Social and Health Research Center is hosting a second annual community health fair today. That's right. So you're going to be able to enjoy from over 40 San Antonio vendors. We got interactive fitness classes, free health screening, fresh produce from San Antonio Food Bank, and of course, fun activities for the full family. I love health fairs. It's happening from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at 106 Carmargo Street in downtown, just south of Cesar Chavez Street. The SAHRC is a San Antonio-based nonprofit focusing on improving and preventing chronic health conditions such as obesity, hypertension, and type 2 diabetes. All right, so Sarah Spivey, if people are out and about today at the health fair, what can they expect? Well, between the hours of 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., there are going to be scattered showers and storms out there. Until then, a few passing showers are possible, but the chance for rain today, 40% in the afternoon. A lot like yesterday, we'll be dealing with those afternoon downpours. Outside right now, starting off mild, 76 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, and generally calm wind conditions. Uh, we've got humidity that is high, though. Dew points are in the low 70s. All right, outside with the radar, quiet across San Antonio, but Look out to the east. You can see a few light rain showers pushing into Gonzales and a few light rain showers pushing into Hallettsville as well. Uh, these are all around a trough of low pressure uh, that will be bringing us a chance for rain tomorrow as well. Just more isolated in nature Sunday afternoon. All right, on the satellite picture, we do have some clouds.
clouds out there this morning, but we'll be teetering back and forth between partly cloudy and mostly cloudy skies today. Uh, temperatures this morning mild 73 in Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs, 79 in Del Rio, 77 in Catula and 77 in Beeville. Taking you through the future cast again, a lot like t yesterday, there are going to be scattered showers and storms in the area during the afternoon hours 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. While we are not anticipating severe weather, if you got any rain yesterday, that's a great indication of what the rain will be like today. Heavy at times. In fact, if you're driving, that rain could be blinding and then we'll see frequent lightning with some of the thunderstorms that develop and gusty winds of up to 40 miles per hour. But again, no severe weather is anticipated today. We'll keep you updated with the sunset at 8 p.m. The rain is going to turn off and we'll see a fairly quiet evening temperatures dropping into the 80s by 10 p.m. Tomorrow afternoon, a 30% chance for rain. 82 at 10, 87 at noon, and again between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. A high temperature today of only in the low 90s because of surrounding rain cooled air. So why are we seeing scattered showers and storms? Well, there's a little trough of low pressure in South Texas. This is going to be moving west and again keeping a chance for isolated rain in the forecast tomorrow for us as well. But of course, we are all going to be concerned about our friends in Louisiana as Tropical Storm Ida is, uh, pardon me, Hurricane Ida now is expected to rapidly, rapidly intensify over these warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico today. It is already intensified. It's a category one hurricane with sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. But today and tonight, it'll strengthen into a category two and eventually a major category three hurricane with sustained winds of 120 miles per hour. This warm water of the Gulf of Mexico is accelerating the intensification and we'll be looking at landfall potentially as a category four hurricane to, uh, tomorrow. The conditions are going to worsen very quickly across southern Louisiana. Uh, this is expected to make landfall sometime in the afternoon between New Iberia and New Orleans, but still uh, the the advice is it, if you have friends in Louisiana under a hurricane warning, the advice is to get to your safe place tonight because conditions will rapidly deteriorate tomorrow. It'll move across Baton Rouge, potentially as a category two hurricane and fall apart across the Mississippi by Monday. But again, hurricane warnings for a good portion of Louisiana, including Baton Rouge, Lafayette, uh, New Orleans and tropical storm warnings all the way out to Lake Charles. We could see wind gusts of up to 100 plus miles per hour from this storm in many areas, even inland up to Baton Rouge. It's a possibility as well. But of course, with hurricanes, it's not just the winds, it's the rain and the storm surge. And from Hurricane Ida, up to 15 to 20 inches of rain is possible in spots. Here in San Antonio, thankfully manageable rain for us today at 40% and tomorrow 30% as well. But again, if you have relatives or friends in Louisiana, uh, and it's a good idea for them to evacuate if they can because the conditions are going to massively deteriorate starting tomorrow. Hoping everyone stays safe out there. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 848, 77 degrees out. Well, adopting a healthy lifestyle isn't always easy. Next on GMSA, we tell you about some habits that experts consider off limits. Well, adopting a healthy lifestyle isn't always easy, even for doctors. But after years of seeing what they see, dealing with patients day after day, there are some habits that experts consider off limits. RJ Marquez explains. On average, doctors see 20 patients a day. So what lessons have they learned? First up, smoking. It's a major cause of cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, diabetes, and more. Another no-no is eating processed meats. Eating 50 grams of processed meat daily increases the risk of pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, and overall cancer mortality. I uh, just have to have a well-balanced meal program that is not too high, for example, in carbohydrates, that is not too high in fats, but rather something that's well-balanced where there are plenty of uh, natural foods, plenty of uh, vegetables. Many doctors also say no to table salt. On average, adults eat more than double the amount of sodium they should. Soda is a drink that many doctors will turn down. It accelerates weight gain. That's important to keep in mind because according to the CDC, 65.7% of adults in San Antonio are overweight or obese. And across the state, 32.4% of children between 10 and 17 are as well. One study found that those who drank soda were 30% more likely to suffer depression. 
The acids in the soft drinks can also lead to tooth erosion. And speaking of teeth, many dentists say they would never chew on ice. Chomping on ice will crack teeth, and we see a lot of people that, you know, bite down on things they shouldn't. We see people that really do open up beer bottles with their teeth. Doctors also say to stay away from artificially colored foods. They contain compounds that are linked to cancer and ADHD. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. There's a lot to digest there. There is a lot. Wow, okay. Also, don't open beers with your teeth either. Ah, yeah, ooh. a bad thing. No. 853, 77 degrees out. Well, a U.S. veteran reunites with Italian siblings. He almost, sh he almost shot in World War II and an inspiring moment. That story next. Good morning and welcome back. Now to a moment that is more than seven decades in the making. So during World War II, U.S. veteran Martin Adler almost shot three Italian siblings after nearly mistaking them for hiding German or hidden German soldiers. Well, now 77 years later, the group was reunited at an airport in northern Italy, fulfilling Adler's dream. So in December, his daughter told the story on a Facebook page as part of efforts to raise funds for her dad's trip to Italy. That's right. So she explained that her father, a veteran, Adler, was so relieved that he hadn't accidentally fired his weapon that he gathered the three children up in an embrace. He then took a picture of them, cherishing it over the decades until he was finally able to meet with them again this week. Wow, 77 years. That's crazy. All right, time now, just about 857, 77 degrees now. Well, new features to help the blind are coming to via buses across San Antonio. Coming up at GMSA at 9, how the program works and when riders can expect the new feature to be put in place. And a bill months in the making, finally making progress at the Texas State Capitol. Next, we're going to explain the latest developments in this highly debated voting rights bill. Chaos in the Bayou State. Thousands scrambling for safety as a life-threatening hurricane. Hurricane Ida takes aim at the state. The latest on the forecast and what Louisiana residents are now facing. The U.S. fights back airstrikes, taking out members of the ISIS-K, the group responsible for killing U.S. troops with just two days until the August deadline. What's next in the Afghanistan crisis? And taking a live look here at the Alamo City, 78 degrees to start your Saturday morning. Sarah says we could be in for some rain throughout the day. Her forecast next. For now, though, good morning, 9 o'clock this morning, this Saturday. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Um, so I had some rain mm -hmm. yesterday, but I also had a visitor to my door at one in the morning and it was a giant grasshopper. Oh, and it scared me because I was like, oh, my gosh, someone on my doorbell camera. Yeah, and I don't know if the grasshoppers like the rain or not, but I've had several in my yard. But one woke me up at one in the morning with its eyes and antenna. Oh, made a friend, goodness. made a friend. It scared me, you know, but Sarah, um, you've got to post that on social media. Yes, I'm going it's to. So good. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we had some good rain in areas yesterday. In fact, at my place, it only rained for about two minutes, but there was tons of ponding on the road and blinding rain on the roadways yesterday in spots. Today, we're going to wait until the afternoon, about 2 to 7 p.m. to see rain around San Antonio, and it'll be scattered in nature, so not everybody's going to see the heavy rain, but uh, it is a possibility. Meanwhile, there are some showers moving through Hallettsville right now uh, and just north of Edna. Outside, it is uh, most Mostly cloudy and 78 degrees. We're already seeing the thermometer rise this morning. We've got relatively calm wind conditions, but today those winds will be from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And yeah, it's humid out there. So here's today's forecast for you. 87 at noon and then in the afternoon, 2 to 7 p.m., 40% chance for scattered downpours. Plenty of lightning is possible as well as those heavy rains, but we're not anticipating severe weather. 93 for the high. The sun will set at 8 p.m. So the state of Louisiana. Louisiana is preparing right now for Hurricane Ida. Currently, it's a category one hurricane, but you have to remember that these Gulf of Mexico waters are very warm, like a bathtub, and this is going to act as fuel to really intensify this storm. In fact, by landfall sometime tomorrow, it's expected to be a major category four hurricane. There's already some evacuations going on across Louisiana. Traffic is at a standstill on parts of I-10. I'll have a look at, Louis at uh, Ida's impacts in the Louisiana area in our weather here at home in San Antonio in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. 
Thank you, Sarah. Well, right now we're staying on top of some late breaking news we told you about a little earlier. Crews are on the scene of a fire in the 2700 block of Southwest Military Drive. It started a little after seven this morning at Tricolor Auto that used to be a car dealership but is no longer in business. Unfortunately, no one was hurt. The damage, though, to the business estimated around $100,000. No word yet on what sparked the flames. We do know arson investigators were on to the scene. We're going to keep you posted with any new information because this is a developing story. Now we are getting our first real look at what kind of impact uh, Hurricane Ida could bring to the Louisiana coast. This is brand new video out of Cuba where the storm is bringing strong winds as it moves north into the Gulf. This is just a taste of what residents in Louisiana could face as Ida builds strength, expected to make landfall as a major hurricane. Let's take a live look in Louisiana now. It's a calm before the storm as far as weather, but the traffic is a whole different story. Just take a look at your screen. Thousands are making their way out of the storm's path this morning. This is a live look at downtown Baton Rouge. Those cars are heading west towards Texas. This traffic is likely to be gridlocked for most of the day. And a live look at Bourbon Street in New Orleans, courtesy of EarthCam. This is the area of the city usually full of tourists, even this early in the morning. But as you can see here, a ghost town. The city's mayor, Latoya Cantrell, says evacuation orders were part of their plan. But now this powerful storm is strengthening so fast and will get there so quickly. There's really no time left. A city literally under sea level well, says it cannot be evacuated. And gas stations, grocery stores virtually empty as people make last minute preparations. A sobering thought for Louisiana one year to the day after Hurricane Laura hit. Today, damage from that major storm still visible in Lake Charles. Ida is expected to arrive Sunday. That's 16 years to the day of Hurricane Katrina. We have a very serious situation on our hands. This will be a life altering storm. Well, Katrina was here. Hey, I had to, I, I had to stand in the water and I slept on the bridge for two days. I'm not going to do that again. Well, officials in Louisiana are saying people should be in their safe spot no later than tonight. Well, now to the crisis in Afghanistan and breaking news overnight, a U.S. drone strike targeting a terrorist involved in possibly planning additional attacks at Cabal Air Airport. That's right. All U.S. citizens urged to avoid the area in order to stay safe. ABC's Julian McFarland is in London with the latest. Breaking overnight, airstrike in Afghanistan, a U.S. drone hitting a member of the Islamic State, a U.S. official saying the target was involved in planning attacks against Americans in Kabul, but not linked to Thursday's deadly bombing at the airport. The strike coming as the U.S. national security team warns another terror attack on Afghanistan is likely. We certainly uh, are prepared um, and would expect future attempts. We're monitoring these threats very, very specifically. Uh, virtually in real time. The deadline for withdrawal now less than four days away. According to the White House, 4,200 people were evacuated in a 12-hour period Friday. But chaos unfolding at the airport. A woman seen holding this three-month-old baby who is a U.S. citizen. Their family going three days without food and water as they try to avoid the Taliban. The Biden administration saying Friday U.S. commanders are making adjustments on the ground to ensure their troops' safety after a suicide bomber killed 13 service members Thursday, but warned the next few days will be the most dangerous. They are beginning the retrograde process over the course of the next couple of days. They will also be mindful of troop posture and keeping the men and women of our military safe to the degree they can. The Pentagon now saying it was just one suicide bomber at the airport, not two, as officials initially believed. The blast also killing about 170 Afghans. Also this morning, new details about a secret operation dubbed the Pineapple Express. A group of all veteran American troops who smuggled about 500 Afghan allies late Wednesday night into the airport before that deadly bomb. Meanwhile, back home, American soldiers desperately efforting evacuations for their Afghan partners. David Maples says he spent three years in Afghanistan and teamed up with his fellow veterans to help evacuate two of their interpreters and their families and are working on helping one more. After they clear the Taliban, get to the gate, and I'm able to talk with an American, or I'm waiting for one of my people there that are on ground to, to pull them in. Overnight, new details about the troops who gave their lives to save others, including Navy Corpsman Max Soviak and Marines Corporal Hunter Lopez and Lance Corporals Kareem Nakui, David Espinoza, Jared Schmitz and Riley McCollum.
And 3.30 this morning, I got a knock on the door. And it's just like you see in the movies. There's two Marines standing on the porch. And that's how we, we found out that he was involved. McCollum just three weeks away from welcoming his first child. He was hoping to come back right around the time the baby was born. Um, but yeah, he knew he was excited. He, he, he would have been a great father. He was ready. He, he was happy. And some more news this morning on evacuations. U.S. officials say around three dozen unaccompanied Afghan children have been taken into U.S. custody after being evacuated. And now around a third of them have been reunited with their families. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Well, the new voting bill in Texas is moving forward in the state house. This comes after months of delays from quorum breaking Democrats who attempted to stop the restrictions in the measure. Republicans argue the bill ensures election election integrity despite no proof of widespread voter fraud. Democrats say if passed into law, these voting changes would be overly restrictive. Next step is the Texas Senate, then the governor's desk. Time now is 908, 78 degrees out. Well, the VIA bus program getting some big improvements specifically for the blind. Details on how those new features work and when they will be installed. Plus, coming up in our next half hour, a first of its kind here in Bear County, a program aimed at curbing domestic violence. We're going to explain how it all works. And here's a live look at the Bonacary Spillway in South Louisiana. Sarah Spivey is tracking Hurricane Ida, the latest forecast coming up. Before we head to break, though, a quick live look out of the Alamo City. Sarah also tracking the chance for some showers here in San Antonio. Her full forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Happening this weekend, giant lanterns will light up the San Antonio River for the Ford Parade of Lanterns. Ten floats will float around downtown starting at 8 this evening. The event is free, and if you can't get out there to see it this weekend, don't worry. We'll be back next weekend as well. Sarah Spivey, will this weekend, of course, be weather permitting for that float parade? Well, at night, right? It's mm -hmm. happening at night. Yeah, I think things should be okay after sunset, right? But from about 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., we are going to have scattered showers and storms in the area today. More isolated tomorrow, but there will be some rain today and tomorrow in the area. Meanwhile, I do want to show you the satellite imagery of Hurricane Ida. The sun has risen on Hurricane Ida and you can really see very clearly that an eye is trying to form here as this hurricane is strengthening over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. As of about 7 a.m., its wind speeds were at 85 miles per hour. We're going to get another update here at 10 a.m., uh, but you can also see very clearly, you know how when you're boiling water, you can see the bubbles come up. You can see the bu bubbling of the clouds around this eye, and that's the most intense area of a hurricane. Now, this is going to strengthen from a category one hurricane to potentially a category four hurricane at the time of landfall sometime tomorrow. Conditions will start deteriorating around Louisiana as soon as early tomorrow morning, and so that's why there's a lot of evacuations going on right now. When we saw earlier the standstill traffic in Baton Rouge as folks are trying to head west. Current conditions outside though here in San Antonio, it's calm at 78 degrees. We've got mostly cloudy skies at the moment and a humid atmosphere. Dew points are in the 70s. Meanwhile, there is some rain out near Hallisville this morning, just some light rain and around San Antonio, our real chance for rain, as I mentioned, is going to be between about 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Outside right now, mild 79 degrees in New Braunfels, already 80 in Del Rio and in Catula, 81 in Pleasanton and 74 in Kerrville. Here's the future cast for the day. And again, look at these scattered showers and storms in nature. Some areas around San Antonio got some good rain yesterday. The rain today will be like that, where at times the rain could be blinding because it's going to come down very heavy. There will be flashes of lightning, but we are not anticipating severe weather. Now, one good thing with the chance for rain is that the afternoon high temperatures should be limited into the low to mid 90s around San Antonio, even in the upper 80s in parts of the hill country. So at noon, we'll be at 87 and it's afternoon that will introduce that 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And once the sun sets, they're going to lose that energy. And so that's why there's not much of a chance for rain after sunset. Reason for the rain is this trough of low pressure spinning across South Texas. That's going to be moving off to the west. And so that's why we're going to have a chance for isolated rain 
on your Sunday afternoon as well. But of course, let's talk about Hurricane Ida right now. As I mentioned, looks like an eye is trying to develop. It is going to be strengthening into a category two and eventually into a major hurricane today over these bathtub temperature waters in the Gulf of Mexico, making landfall anywhere from New Iberia all the way into south of New Orleans sometime tomorrow. And again, conditions are going to be deteriorating starting tomorrow morning for Louisiana. It'll move right near Baton Rouge uh, potentially as a major hurricane uh, overnight. And that's another horrible thing about this storm is that a lot of the big effects, the storm surge, the deluges, the damaging wind gusts going to be happening uh, at night when it's dark outside. By Monday, though, it'll be moving up into Mississippi River Valley. All right, again, the surge is going to be a big issue from Morgan City all the way to New Orleans, potential storm surge of 7 to 11 feet and rainfall of 15 to 20 inches in spots over a 48 hour period. That is very damaging as well. So the rain, the surge, the hurricane force gusts, which I'll show you in just a bit. So if you'd like to track Ida and the entire hurricane season for yourself, we have a hurricane tracker app. It's completely free. You can zoom in on the cone of uncertainty and you can look at uh, all the different forecasts. Make sure to allow notifications there as well. Now again, back here at home in San Antonio, no direct impacts from Ida, but we're going to have scattered showers and storms this afternoon, isolated storms tomorrow afternoon and Monday, and it's going to be hot in the middle of the week, upper 90s for the high, still eluding that triple digit number though, so <laughs> we'll keep that under our belt. And then of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on Hurricane Ida. Max, Sarah? Thank you, Sarah. All right, 917, 78 degrees out. Over the past few years, San Antonio has seen a rise in domestic violence. We have the details on a new court program that helps victims. And of course, a big night in high school football, first Friday Night Lights. We have a look at some of the best games, best highlights right after the break. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, seven, eight. Fireball two, daily four, four, zero, five, five, fireball eight. And your cash five, two, 28, 32, 33, 35. There you go, Mega Millions, 110, 44, 47, 56, big number 23, Mega Pyre 3. Good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday? Yeah, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, because we had some great Friday night football, really the first Friday night football of the season. Harlandale flipping over the start of the season. You missed they were flipping. Indians on the attack against the mighty Mustangs of Jefferson. Joseph Rodriguez keeping on their option read, breaking free of the middle, huge gain. Then check out the stutter step to the freeze. The defender runs out of bounds, not for a 28-yard gain. Indians keep it on the ground, running the option to the left. Rodriguez pitching to Zion Molina, managed to score from six yards out. The final from Harlandale, 48 to zero. All right, next up, we got South Sam Bobcats ready to start the second half against McCollum and the Cowboys already up 7-0. McCollum taking to the air, play action. Sean Tejeda wide open. Ruben, 27-yard touchdown, a 13-0 lead. So the final from South Sand, let's pull it up 26-0. to All right, the Highland Owl was fired up for this season opener against Divine Warhorses. What a mascot, the Warhorses. All right, but Divine getting on the scoreboard quickly and a lot. Brady rolling out, taking a large shot. Peyton Carr, look at the concentration. One foot down, score before going out of bounds. 21-7 Divine. All right. Back we go to the big board sports, big board scoreboard. Let's see if we pull up these scores. Divine winning big. Look at that, 57 points. And CC King losing by one point. A barn burner, 12 to 13. Jefferson, zero. Harlandale, 48. McComb, 26. South San, zero. Oh. And of course, if you- It was my high school, Corpus Christi King. We lost by one. Shouts. No. <laughs> Our Sarah Costa made it out to Friday Night Lights too. I did, you know, I'm trying. See. There you go. Yeah. Made it on the bow. Yeah. All right. Time now, 9:22, 78 degrees out. All well, right. coming up next, we'll tell you about a new program that's going to help the blind and visually impaired that VIA hopes to implement. That we'll tell you about that in just a bit. Well, earlier this summer, Congressman Joaquin Castro announced $900,000 for a new VIA bus program that will help the blind or riders with disabilities find bus stops and learn of arrival times. It's an app called Navi Lens that uses audible GPS to plot your route of where you need to go step by step. The app uses audible GPS to plot your route of where you need to go 
once the user gets to the bus stop, there will be signs with the Navi Lens QR codes, like on your screen there. The user can point their phone at the code and it will instruct you if you are at the correct stop. Now, the codes can be registered 12 times the distance than other QR codes, and it doesn't have to be captured straight on and the user can capture it on the side or just part of it and it will still register. Athlete Malone has been riding via buses for 40 years. She's been blind for 14 years. She is on the board of trustees for VIA. She says this app will give riders like her more independence when it comes to getting around San Antonio. Right now, a blind person can ride the bus with a GPS system, probably from Google, but Google will not tell them where the bus stop is. It can get them in the vicinity, and then they would have to get to the bus stop, try and figure out if that's the correct bus stop by listening for the buses. This will accomplish even more for them. Well, a pilot study of Navilens will launch this fall, and VIA hopes to have the app in place in the future. And Max, earlier we said that $900,000 in funds that Joaquin Castro requested, it did pass the House. Mm -hmm. It's in the Senate right now. Mm -hmm. And so that money, even if that money does not get approved for some reason, um, this program is still gonna move forward, but that money will be huge and help them get all the necessary QR codes and all the signs. There's over 6,000 bus yeah. stops in in San Antonio. So that those funds will help them put all that signage up that they need. All right, great story, Sarah. 927, 78 degrees out. Well, police say they have their suspect in a Friday morning shooting involved involving a father and his one-year-old son. The newest details coming up. And what kind of devastating effects will Hurricane Ida have on Louisiana? Well, Sarah Spivey will join us to chat. A couple questions that we have. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday at 9.31 this morning. Thanks so much for starting your morning with us. Our, start, our morning started with a little bit of rain. Yeah, I had some sprinkles on my windshield, and I really did love some of those showers we got yesterday afternoon, Sarah. Yeah, those nice summer showers, the ones that, you know, are a little loud. You got plenty of lightning with the thunder showers in the afternoon, as well as some heavy rain. Uh, but those are the kinds of showers and thunder showers we will be expecting to see this afternoon as well. They'll be scattered in nature. Chance for rain in San Antonio is about 40%. All right, outside right now we've got those puffy cumulus clouds. It is uh, mostly cloudy and 78. Already feels like it's 81 though. There is going to be a slight heat index today, even though high temperatures will be only in the low 90s. Uh, now here's a look at today's forecast. Around noon, we will have some isolated rain out there, but it, the weather should be fair outside until about 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. is when we have the chance for those scattered thunder showers. Again, no severe weather anticipated, but some of those thunder showers will produce a lot of heavy rain fairly quickly, as well as a lightning too. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now we do have some showers out near Gonzales and Hallettsville this morning, but it's fairly dry around San Antonio. And of course, we're continuing to monitor Hurricane Ida, currently a category one hurricane, but it's going to be interesting to see how at the 10 a.m. update, how intense this storm has already uh, gotten. You can kind of see that there's an eye starting to develop and these warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico are fuel for this storm. Unfortunately, it's expected to make landfall in Louisiana as a major hurricane. We'll be back to talk about potential impacts to Louisiana and of course our weather here in San Antonio in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man is behind bars after police say he shot a father who was bringing his family home, including his one year old child. It's a story we first told you about yesterday on GMSA. Police say Jose Rodriguez Moreno shot at a family as they were driving on Monticello Court. He says he tells police he thought the people in the truck shot at him first, so he fired back. But investigators say there was no evidence to support that. So here's a look at the scene early from yesterday morning. The shooting happened on Monticello Court, but police found the victim and his family at an HEB parking lot not from, far from there. He tells police he sped off to protect his family. The victim was shot twice in the shoulder. The other two passengers were not injured. A Bear County deputy who happened to be in the area noticed a man running down the street 
and cornered him in a backyard. Turns out it was Moreno. He now faces three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Also new this morning, a man in the hospital after being hit by a vehicle on the city's west side. So take a look. This all happened just after 1030 last night on Guadalupe Street and Southwest 18th Street. Now officers tell us a 57 year old man was crossing the street when he was hit by a vehicle. The driver of that vehicle took off, but then came back after the crash. Now the victim taken to the hospital. He is expected to be OK. Police say the driver then left the scene because he was being threatened by the man's friends. Police have ruled this an accident and we're being told that the driver will not be charged. Well, it's a first of a kind program in Bear County, a program focused on curbing domestic violence. The Family Violence Prevention Program was created this spring and civil district court judges are using it as a way to help an entire family involved in domestic violence cases. That's right. Eric Hernandez spoke to the team who works on this program and gives us a better idea of how exactly it works. Over the past several years, Bear County has seen a rise in family violence and domestic violence cases. The pandemic in part fueled the increase as well. The answer to in the long term reducing domestic violence and bringing those alarming statistics down is to take a public health approach to domestic violence. That then led to the creation of the Family Violence Prevention Program, which launched in April. This new program is something that every judge on the civil district side is using. That's 14 judges and four assistant judges. It's an administrative office that is tasked with providing support to our civil district court judges and our associate judges to better address issues of family violence as it arises in our civil cases. The program is a team of five that provide a plan of services for a family and no one case is the same. We step in and provide the support as requested by the judges for each family to make sure that they are able to navigate that and to hopefully break that cycle of family violence. Some of those resources provided include counseling for children, parenting education, and batterers intervention and prevention courses. This is all in hopes to turn things around in Bear County and make sure families are protected. Our hope is that, you know, through the resources and the therapy and the education, is that we plant that seed of change for the family. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, there's so much happening in and around San Antonio. That is why we have a special double header of leading essay tomorrow morning. We are joined live by both District 2 Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez and President and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank, Eric Cooper. We are set to talk about a lot. Topics ranging from the budget, how it will affect people living in the Alamo City, and of course, the future of San Antonio. We're also going to be discussing equity and food insecurities that we see widespread across our region. If you have any questions that you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us at 8 and 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning for the special segments. Time now is 937, 79 degrees out. Well, what kind of impacts could Louisiana feel from Hurricane Ida? And is global warming playing a factor? Sarah Spivey answers some questions about the storm. Plus, well, we have a recap of the top games, top highlights from last night's Friday Night Lights. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Obviously, covering a lot here locally and, of course, around the country. So, Sarah Spivey joining us. So, Sarah, we want to take a second, pick your brain about Hurricane Ida. First off, what kind of impact should the people in Louisiana expect from this storm? Well, guys, you know, Hurricane Ida is expected to make landfall sometime tomorrow afternoon through the evening as a major Category 4 hurricane in Louisiana. But the effects from Ida will be felt as early as tomorrow morning on shore. Now, currently, Hurricane Ida is a Category 1 hurricane, but it is expected to rapidly intensify over the Gulf of Mexico. And other than the usual wind, from hurricanes, you know that people expect potentially up to 140 plus mile wind mile per hour winds. Storm surge is going to be a major issue. A storm surge of up to 10 to 15 feet in spots and rainfall of 15 to 20 inches stretching outside of the cone that you see here uh, from New Iberia to New Orleans all the way out to Hattiesburg and even up into Jacksonville, Mississippi. There could be 10 inches of rain as well. Well, Sarah, you know, a couple weeks ago, you and I talked at length about that IPCC report. Experts have been warning that hurricanes could start to get stronger with global warming. So can you speak about that a little bit? Yeah, in the last decade, decade and a half, we've seen intense 
quick intensification of these hurricanes pretty much right before landfall. Now, the reason for that is that the Gulf of Mexico is warm. It's always been warm this time of year, right? But if you increase the temperature a little bit of the Gulf of Mexico, the waters over the Gulf of Mexico, you're going to get even more intensification. And so that's why climate change has been directly linked to intense hurricanes, particularly at the time of landfall. And unfortunately, Hurricane Ida is going to be a major hurricane by the time it makes landfall. I want to show you the traffic here that is occurring on uh, I-10 West. This is at Bat and Rouge and you can see people are heeding the warnings to evacuate but it is at a standstill now a lot of uh, uh, the people who are in charge are encouraging people to be in their safe spot by tonight because again overnight and early tomorrow morning potentially uh, the conditions could deteriorate pretty rapidly. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at where Hurricane Ida is right now. It is a category one hurricane with sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. But on the visible satellite image, you can be a meteorologist with me and you can see very clearly there is a eye starting to form here from Hurricane Ida and it's bubbling up around that because of the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico strengthening occurring right now gusts of up to 100 miles per hour and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the track on here as I mentioned those warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico strengthening to a category two hurricane a little bit later today and eventually a category three hurricane potentially before midnight tonight making landfall as a category four hurricane sometime tomorrow from New Iberia all the way south of New Orleans that's a possibility then moving through Baton Rouge as a category two hurricane before eventually dissipating into a tropical storm over the Mississippi, but still bringing a lot of rain for areas in Mississippi, Louisiana, and even in Arkansas. Now there's a hurricane warning for a good portion of Louisiana here, including Lafayette, Baton Rouge, Homa, New Orleans, as well as a tropical storm warning even out to the east because effects are still going to be felt potentially out into the Florida panhandle and in Lake Charles some effects as well. Although it does look like Ida is not going to be affecting Lake Charles as much as Hurricane Laura did a year ago. Another thing that's an unfortunate coincidence is that Hurricane Ida is expected to make landfall 16 years to the date of Hurricane Katrina. Potential wind gusts of up to a, a more than uh, 140 miles per hour at the time of landfall. This is just one particular model showing wind gusts out in New Orleans of severe storm strength uh, and uh, wind gusts of up to hurricane strength for Baton Rouge as well. Before again, it still could bring gusty winds to Jackson, Mississippi, Monroe, Louisiana, and some heavy rains as well. The intense rainfall is going to be an issue as well because in a period of about 24 hours or so areas in Louisiana could get 15 to 20 inches of rain causing some flooding. All right, our thoughts and prayers will be with those in Louisiana here in San Antonio. We're not going to see any direct effects from Ida. Instead, today we're going to have a warm day. Uh, we've got a few isolated showers on the radar out toward Hallettsville at the moment. And today, much like yesterday, we're going to have some afternoon thunder showers. Now, locally, mostly cloudy skies in the 80s now, so we're starting to warm up. And then look at the future cast. Again, a lot like yesterday, scattered downpours are going to occur. If you were anywhere near the rain yesterday, you know how heavy that rain got, and also that there was frequent lightning as well. And so we'll have scattered showers and storms, no severe weather anticipated, but where it does rain, there will likely be some heavy downpours, some frequent lightning, and potentially some gusty winds of up to 40 miles per hour. Today, a high temperature of only 93. That's fairly cool for this time of year because of the rain cooled air around the area. Not only are we going to see rain today, but a trough of low pressure is going to be moving west south of us, and that's going to allow for an isolated shower or storm tomorrow, Sunday and Monday. Now during the middle of the week, though, it's going to get hot. We'll be close to 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday before isolated rain returns Thursday and Friday. We just got the pollen count in. I'll have a look at that for you before the show closes out Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 946, 8 degrees out. So in about 15 minutes, a new episode of Texas Eats airs right here on KSAT. Well, today David Elder takes us inside a hidden gym in the hill country located right outside San Antonio. Check that out. 
Really nice cut, some of the fat on the outside, rendered perfectly, and cooked to a really nice medium. That's the bite. Money maker. Ooh. <laughs> mm. If you love ribeye steaks and you're in Casterville, this is the one to get. It has a really nice crust on the outside, lots of flavor, cooked perfectly in the middle, and those potatoes on the side, come on! Those things were rendered perfectly, nice fat content on them, crusty on the outside, tender on the inside, asparagus, and a little bit of cowboy butter on top. That's gotta be one of my favorite steak bites I've ever had. Yeah, so this is our uh, house specialty. It's been on the menu for several years. It's our cilantro chicken. Our cilantro chicken is marinated for over 48 hours. Um, so we, it's fettuccine pasta with a cilantro cream base. Our chicken's marinated in cilantro and it's tossed with uh, sauteed mushrooms, heirloom cherry tomatoes, and then we have a, serta, a side of focaccia bread. I'm in. Sold. I like that piece of cornbread. Again, David Elder, if you're watching, just bring in samples. It helps the show. Just saying. Samples. 947, 80 degrees out. Candyman hits theaters again, oh. but is it worth all the hype? A breakdown of what critics are saying. Back at Happy Saturday, Somerset Bulldogs all fired up, leading Brackenridge by two touchdowns. We're going to take you right to the third quarter. Wait for it. Here we go. But Brack coming back. This is a play of the week right here. Quarterback Richard Lopez dodging the blitz. Ooh, escaping the pocket. Boom, slipping a tackle. Cuts across the field to the opposite side before scoring a 42-yard touchdown. <sighs> Boom. All right, let's see. There's the final. Somerset, 36. Brack. 22, a lot of good highlights from that game. All right, they don't call them the Titans of Southwest Legacy for nothing. Opening the season over against Medina Valley from their own 16-yard line. Look at that, beautiful. Watch the man go, shaking off the would-be tagler, breaking down the outside, picks up a block, running free. He is all by himself, cutting back to the inside. Oof, Panthers 20, jogging in, 84-yard touchdown. Getting Southwest Legacy out early. The final from this one, Southwest Legacy holding on 22, beating Medina Valley 220. Here we go. In the stands, in the stands, waiting for Friday Night Lights. Where are we, where are we go? Randolph takes on the Young Men's Academy, Leadership Academy, first and 10. Michael Brown taking the handoff to the 33, pops the outside, gets past the defender, goes down the side, like making it look easy, just like that. It is 7 0 Randolph. The final. Wait for it, Randolph. Ooh, they came out swinging, 42 to seven. And our neighbors right in front of KSAT, Central Catholic, their fan section always creative. Let's take a look. They're hosting Southwest and they're getting off to a great start. Garrett Davidsmeyer, toting the rock, breaking free to the outside, turn on the Jets, taking it all the way down to the 30, gain of 30, getting knocked out of bounds. Few plays later, taking the carry again, this time powering his way down the middle, seven, breaking the plane. Missing the extra point, 6 0 Central Catholic. Let's take a look at the full BGC scoreboard. Central Catholic holding on to win big, 31 7. Whew, what a first week of Friday Night Lights. Shout out to all the photographers out there, the whole sports department, everyone who made all the streaming possible. I know you're making a lot of parents, a lot of fans out there very happy. All right, it's been nearly 30 years since Candyman first terrified moviegoers. His spiritual sequel to the original Fright Flick hopes to scare audiences again. CNN's Rick Damagella reports. Candyman. The urban legend is, if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror, he appears in the reflection and it kills you. The urban legend is back to scare a new generation in Candyman. Candyman. I grew up with Candyman, with, with the myth of Candyman in my household. My earliest memory is in the bathrooms with the lights off, playing the Candyman game with my sisters. How many times we could say it before somebody, you know, brought us back to our senses, you know what I'm saying? I never did finish it. Candyman. Don't. Don't say that. I knew about the urban legend of Candyman and about saying his name five times in a mirror, and I made sure that I did, never did that. Now, when it comes to watching the film, and I never watched it because I think, that, I think maybe it's because being a black man in America, I just experienced enough, you know, trauma on the daily day basis. So I stayed away from it. But once I got cast, 
Legacy. And I knew that what Jordan Peele was doing with this uh, spiritual sequel, I wanted to go to the source material and really check it out. Directed by Nia LaCosta and co-written by Oscar-winning screenwriter Jordan Peele, the movie is more than simple horror. I thought we had a great opportunity to show this young, black, very ambitious couple. Mm -hmm. And when we start off, we see the love they have for each other, the encouragement, and then to watch how they deal with things that may go awry. You look up a candy man. He's the monster that's part of this neighborhood. Watching with the lights on in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, Thank here's here's a look go. at how the movie is doing right now on RottenTomatoes.com. It's actually not doing that bad. It's a certified fresh with 85% from critics and 74% from moviegoers. All right, we don't have that much time, but we know our executive producer, Joy's thoughts. She said two out of 10, not scary enough, fell short of expectations. So Joy's really going against Rotten Tomatoes here. I, I see that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll see if it's not scary, though. I'm going to see it. I'm definitely going to see it. Now we have to see it. Now we have to. All right, 9.55, 80 degrees out. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, important news for parents, what you can do to tackle kids with challenging behavior. And before you go, just to look here, that is I-10 West, and you can see that people are currently trying to evacuate uh, from Ida's path. Ida expected to make landfall as a major Category 4 hurricane at some point tomorrow, but effects will be felt as early as uh, tomorrow morning as well. So we'll be uh, keeping you updated there. Meanwhile, we got the pollen count in. Molds are low at 450, uh, so that is some good news there. No reason for your sneeze in if it's uh, the mold because it's low. <laughs> All right, we have got a forecast today with scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. At noon, it'll be 87, but in the afternoon, that's when we'll see scattered showers and storms about a 40% chance from 2 to 7 p.m. We'll be looking for some pockets of heavy rain as well as flashes of lightning. Of course, we'll keep you updated tomorrow. A chance for isolated rain in the afternoon as our friends across Louisiana deal with Hurricane Ida tomorrow and Monday. It'll be hot in the middle of the week, though for us. Thank you, Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. And of course, we're going to be tracking everything tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio. You can join us here at 6 a.m. and of course 8 a.m. But for now, we're going to toss it on over. Texas Eats starts right now.